Hi everyone, welcome to this Wellspring Cancer Support Nourish session on managing eating related side effects during cancer and cancer treatment. Today we are going to be talking about some digestive issues that may come up when you are going through cancer treatment or after cancer treatment, things like gas, cramps, bloating, and heartburn. My name is Kara Rosenblum. I'm one of the Wellspring Dietitians, and I'm going to be taking you through this presentation today. It's important to start by explaining to you where our information comes from. So we do offer only evidence-based research presentations here at Wellspring, and that means that all of the information we have comes from science. We rely heavily on information from the Canadian Cancer Society, the World Cancer Research Fund, the American Institute for Cancer Research, and the National Cancer Institute, because these are highly respected science-based organizations, and that is where we um, have our most trusted information that we share with you today. So some of you may note that as you are going through cancer treatment or finishing cancer treatment, your digestion seems a little bit different and may be wondering why. Well, it is common that some cancer treatments or different medications may cause some digestive upset, such as gas, bloating, stomach cramps, heartburn, um, and that is um, not unusual given the circumstances of the medication or treatment such as chemotherapy and radiation. The good news is that these side effects usually subside after treatment, so you really are looking at treating it in the moment. And that's really what matters the most, is that changes in your digestive health can be uncomfortable and you have to know that you don't need to suffer for the most part because there are many tips that can help as long as you let your doctor or dietitian know what's happening. So if you have cramps or heartburn, you might find that you're having pain. If you're in pain from bloating or gas, it may affect your appetite. You may eat less and lose weight. So you want to know that gas, bloating, and heartburn can be treated, and there's many things you can do to help this along, and that's what we're here to help with today. So first, I'm just going to explain what these different conditions are. We'll talk about gas, bloating, and cramps and some tips for that, and then we'll go on and talk about heartburn. So um, gas is um, something that builds up inside your body. And it is totally normal every day to have a little bit of belching or burping or flatulence or farting. These are natural ways for the body to get rid of excess gas that might get trapped in your gut from swallowing air or from eating foods that release a lot of gas. So it is normal to have some belching or some flatulence during the day, but it can become uncomfortable if you have too much gas built up. Bloating is that feeling when the gas builds up and makes your tummy feel very full and under pressure. And that pressure can lead to sharp pains, which are called cramps. You'll find that relief comes when gas is expelled by the belching or through flatulence. So what the goal really is in treating this uh, gas and bloating and cramping is to reduce the amount of gas that's building up in your digestive system. And there are some tips for helping with that. The first thing you really wanna focus on is reduce swallowing excess amounts of air. When we swallow too much air, it ends up as too much gas inside our digestive system and leads to these symptoms we're discussing. So one thing you can do to reduce swallowing excess air is to eat small frequent meals or snacks throughout the day rather than having three large meals. When you're chewing and swallowing, you're going to be swallowing air. So if we can minimize that by eating smaller meals at any given time throughout the day, it's better than swallowing a lot of air at once in a very big meal. The other thing you can do is when you're drinking is to sip your fluids and your beverages more slowly. It's also important not to use a straw for drinking when possible, because when you use a straw, you tend to swallow more air than if you just sip from a glass. The other thing that can make us swallow a lot of air is chewing gum. If you think about that chewing motion, with each chew, you're swallowing a lot more, so there's a better chance of swallowing more air. And finally, if you wear dentures, you want to ensure they fit properly, because if they don't, you might be chewing um, more than you need to and swallowing more than you need to. 
Um, in addition, the other thing you can do if gas does build up in the system is focus on your actual body and how it feels. You can try gentle exercise, such as going for a walk. That might help keep your system moving and give you some relief. Or you can try gently massaging the spot where you feel the pain, where the bloating is. Because remember, gas is air, so it can move around just with gentle touch. The other thing you wanna do is limit drinks or foods that cause gas and bloating. So as I said earlier, sometimes swallowing air causes the gas, but sometimes the foods and drinks we choose when they break down in our digestive system, they actually produce excess amounts of gas. And so we wanna cut down if you find that your symptoms are worse after eating these specific foods, you can cut back on them. So a big one for many people is carbonated drinks. So that would be things like soda pop, sparkling water like Perrier or Pellegrino, um, beer, anything that has a lot of fuzziness or um, bubbles in it. And those bubbles can create more gas. You may notice sometimes when you take your first sip of a, of a soda, some people will let out a belch. It's because your system is just, you know, expelling that excess gas. So that's an obvious one that if you do find if you drink carbonated beverages, you have gas, you want to cut back on those and just drink flat water um, as your beverage of choice. There are also some known uh, vegetables that tend to be gas producing. Um, these are especially in the cruciferous family. So things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, spinach, and leafy greens, they tend to cause um, more gas and some flatulence in people, as do um, foods in the garlic and onion family. So things like um, scallions and onions and leeks and chives and garlic, they also are gas producing for some people. And again, it's important to note that if you eat these foods and they're not causing you any gas or bloating, you can still keep them in your diet, but they are always something to consider. The first thing a dietitian might do with you if you're having gas or bloating is say to you, keep a food diary and write down the foods you eat and when your gas and bloating happens. And if you do notice, for example, that every time you eat cauliflower, you have more cramps and more gas, then you'd want to reduce your intake of cauliflower for the time being because that might be triggering the problem. So, excuse me, these are some foods that may be causing these problems. The other big one are beans, peas, and lentils. Um, as well as food sweetened with sorbitol, which is a, a sugar alcohol that is um, used sort of as a mild artificial sweetener in gum, chewing gum, um, in some baked goods and ice cream. So just check labels. Some people find um, that they don't digest sorbitol. Um, it's kind of an indigestible type of carbohydrate, so it may cause a lot of gas. So if you avoid foods with sorbitol, including chewing gum with sorbitol, that might help. Um, the other thing for some people that may lead to gas and bloating is a lactose intolerance. And lactose is a sugar that's found in milk and some other milk products, and it may cause gas and bloating in susceptible people who have lactose intolerance. So if you find that you have gas, bloating, or diarrhea after eating milk products specifically, that probably is what you're looking at. So there is a chance that cancer treatments may cause this lactose intolerance, but it's not common. It's usually in people who've already had lactose intolerance that they find that it may be exacerbated at this point during treatment. So what you can do as a remedy for this is there are many dairy products that are labeled lactose free. That means that they do not have this lactose sugar in it that causes a digestion. It's already been broken down. Um, so you can buy lactose free versions of these foods um, or dairy. You can go dairy free as well and choose more plant based yogurts and plant based milks. Whatever works in your diet is fine. And if you're working with a dietitian at your cancer center, you can talk to them about what kind of dietary changes you should be making so that you're the most comfortable. Now we'll spend a few minutes talking about heartburn, starting with the definition of what it is. Heartburn is that burning feeling that you get in your throat and your upper stomach um, often after eating. Some people describe that they get a sour taste in their mouth or a bad taste in their mouth. Um, and the problem with heartburn is that it can be painful or uncomfortable, and it can lead to loss of appetite. And the problem with that is some people who are undergoing cancer treatment will experience weight loss, 
And if you have heartburn and you're not eating, that is one of the contributors to weight loss as well. The other problem is that heartburn when it's excessive can cause nausea and vomiting and make you feel uncomfortable. But the good news is your healthcare team has ideas that can help you. So there may be time where you need medication to help control the heartburn, or you may be, may be able to use some of these tips in order to manage it without medication. That is individual for everybody and up to your healthcare team. So I would check with your team and figure out if your heartburn is at the level where it needs medication, or if some of these tips may help. There are known foods that may trigger heartburn. And these aren't always the exact same in everybody, but if you look collectively at some of the foods that cause heartburn in majority of people, it's usually one or more of these foods. So you can start again by looking at a food journal where you write down what you eat and look at when you have symptoms, and you may be able to pinpoint one or more of these specific foods. And if those are your problem foods, you just remove them from your diet for the time being, and they can help um, be part of the solution. So some of the foods that may trigger heartburn are spicy foods. So anything with cayenne pepper or sriracha sauce or hot sauce um, or any kind of really spicy peppers like jalapeno peppers or serrano peppers, anything like that. Uh, high fat foods. So things that are deep fried like French fries or potato chips, donuts, or foods that are very high in fat from butter or cream sauces, they may trigger heartburn as well. Um, acidic foods may be problems. So foods that are high in acid include tomato products like tomato sauce, citrus fruits like oranges, um, lemon squeezed in water, for example, would make it more acidic. So sometimes acid will be problematic or triggering for heartburn. Um, alcohol as well is something that leads to heartburn, as is caffeine from things like coffee, tea, um, some soft drinks like colas or chocolate. So you can get caffeine free versions of these beverages. And again, this is not an indication that you need to remove all of these foods from your diet. It's merely a suggestion that for some people, these triggers, these foods trigger heartburn. So you just want to recognize if any of these foods that you eat cause heartburn right after, that's your hint that you probably want to remove that food from your diet for the time being while you're experiencing heartburn um, until your treatment is done and this resolves. And then you can go back to eating the foods on this list that you enjoy that maybe you had to take out for a little while. Some other things that may help are eating smaller meals more often rather than three large meals. That gives your body time to digest um, smaller meals and it may not put as much pressure on your digestive system. The other thing has to do with um, your actual physical stature after you eat. And digestion goes in a downward motion. So you want to remain upright after you're eating to give food time to get through your digestive system, your gastrointestinal tract before you lie down. So you want to make sure that you don't lie down right after eating. And you want to wait at least two or three hours after eating before going to bed. Um, some people do find heartburn is worse at night or when they're lying down in bed or taking a nap during the day. And that is simply because of the way um, our digestive system is built. It's built <laughs> as an upright system. So when you're lying down, if you find heartburn creeps up, you might want to try keeping your head and shoulders propped up with an extra pillow. So instead of lying down flat, you're sort of sitting up and that will help um, reduce heartburn symptoms. That is our presentation on managing the symptoms of gas, of bloating, and diarrhea. We hope you join us for another presentation.